This is Valley News Live at noon. Cass County commissioners voted last night to reinstate a face mask policy for county employees and the public. The policy remained in place until further notice. Clothed or disposable masks are required in county buildings. Disposable masks will be provided to all visitors at the entrances to county buildings. Employees are required to wear masks anytime they meet with a member of the public in a county building or in an indoor space with others in close proximity. But employees don't need to wear masks in their own office space if no one else is present. Well, four year old Wadida girl was hurt after a crash along Highway 10 in Ottertail County. The state patrol says the child was injured when the driver of the pickup she was in swerved to avoid another pickup trying to cross the highway in front of them. Troopers say the vehicles did not collide, but the pickup the girl was in rolled over into a ditch. No one else was hurt. Well, we started off chilly and it's right on time for fall, which starts tomorrow. Let's check in with Summer Snowbot to let us know more. Hey, Summer. Hey, Brian, and happy Tuesday, everyone. It definitely was a jacket needed kind of morning. We fell down to 37 degrees in both Langdon and in Hallock, 39 in Devil's Lake, Rolla, Harvey and Carrington, 37. That's just so chilly. It seems like for this time of year when our average lows are in the mid 40s, which we were in Fargo, 47 degrees, 46 in Detroit Lakes, 46 in Wadena as well, 43 in Roseau and in Thief River Falls. Right now we are seeing clear, sunny skies. We've had just a few passing clouds, nothing to interrupt your day. Temperatures right now are in the 50s and 60s, so we've warmed up a touch. Still at 57 in Bemidji and in Fergus Falls, 61 in Devil's Lake, Grand Forks, and in Fargo, 62 at this time in Jamestown. And satellite radar showing clear skies. But coming up in your hour by hour forecast, I'll let you know when a few clouds might develop, when we might see some showers, and when our little warm up is expected. All that's coming up in just a few minutes. Just don't let the clouds block the sun so we can actually feel it. Oh, we won't have any problem today. Oh, I like that. Thanks, Summer. <laughs> <laughs> well, if a fire was to break out into your home, do you have a safety plan to get out? If not, the West Fargo Fire Department has you covered. Make sure your escape plan is practiced with all family members. There should always be two ways to get out of every room. Close your door before you go to sleep. A meeting place is vital to knowing if everyone made it out of the home safely and make sure all paths inside of the homes are clear of clutter. The West Fargo Fire Department will begin talking to kindergarten through second graders next month about these safety tips, but you don't want to forget about those homeowners as well. So we don't get to go out and talk to many people out in the public, and that's why during Fire Safety Month when we go out and talk to kindergarten, first and second graders, and we give them tips to bring home to mom and dad, that actually gets it into the house and tries to make something to make the child more comfortable and more um, safe feeling with their family. Now, these full details can be found at valleynewslive.com. Well, Johnson & Johnson says a two-dose version of its COVID-19 vaccine is 94% effective against symptomatic infection, making it comparable to the ones offered by Pfizer and Moderna. J&J &J also says adding a booster dose to a single shot raises immunity even more and should provide strong protection against infection. Their single-dose shot was approved for emergency use in February, and this new information comes from three ongoing studies looking at various aspects of the vaccine. Well, there's new information on the disappearance of Gabby Petito. Investigators have indicated that we could know as early as today if the human remains found in Wyoming belongs to Petito. Police are still searching for her fiance. CBS News correspondent Bradley Blackburn has the latest. Preliminary autopsy results could confirm today whether the remains found in Wyoming are in fact Gabby Petito's. It's been two days since investigators discovered those remains, which they say match the description of the 22-year-old. As Gabby's loved ones mourn her loss, the search continues for her fiancé, Brian Laundry. He and Petito lived in Northport, Florida at his parents' home. Police say he returned on September 1st by himself, 10 days before Petito was declared missing. Laundry's parents say he has now been missing for a week. It's a lot of time for somebody to kind of get their act together. We certainly think Brian has some explaining to do. Please search warrant. On Monday, FBI agents and Florida police officers poured into the Laundry family home, exercising a search warrant and seizing several items. 
Grand County Sheriff's Office. The Grand County, Utah Sheriff's Office yesterday released this 911 call from August from a witness who says he saw the couple fighting. Uh, we drove by and the gentleman was slapping the girl. He was slapping her? Yes, and then we stopped. They ran up and down the sidewalk. He proceeded to hit her, hopped in the car, and they drove off. This body cam video shows police responding to the call and an emotional petito. We have been fighting all morning, and, and he wouldn't let me in the car before. And then... Neither party wanted to file charges, so no arrests were made. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. The Lounging family's attorney is planning a press conference today, but last night the attorney called off the press conference without explanation. Well, coming up at noon, if you're visiting, planning to visit an apple orchard this fall, there may not be enough to go around. And we have plenty of sunshine to enjoy this week. Fall starts tomorrow. Summer Snowbox is back with weather to plan your day.